everybody, this is Zigzag Zog, and I want to welcome you back to this playthrough of Total War Three Kingdoms with the Eight Princes DLC, and we are playing as Sima, or Sima Ai. I don't even know if I'm close, but I have nobody here to validate, but I hear secondhand that I, my pronunciation isn't quite what it could be. But anyway, let's have some fun with Sima Ai. And we are going to move to finish what we started last turn, and that is take over the large town of Lingling. Ling. The uh, General Li Chang decided to vacate when he saw our forces approaching. And so let's finish it off in this rain. We'll see if the rain follows us onto the battlefield. And let's take over this town. What kind of a map view do we have for this town? Looks like a standard. We're going to have some towers to fight through town. Let's get in there and set up for it. <laughs> I hope it's not glorious and I just get it done. <laughs> I hate when they say stuff like that. It gives me a lot to live up to. Okay, we're looking for a victory here. Let's get in there and find out if we can deliver. Okay, we got towers and towers that overlap, overlap, and it looks like probably, I'm guessing on the backside, we got less towers that overlap. This one has some overlap on this entrance. This one doesn't have any overlap as long as we come in slight angle right here. So I think that's where we're gonna set up our main attack and we'll keep a few forces that are more mobile maybe to draw a feint on a couple sides on the other end and maybe draw off some of his forces and see if we can make our main attack a little a little weaker or a little stronger against weaker resistance so let's group our archers because we're going to group them all together for one of the main attacks right here and we'll give them some, who shall we give them? We'll give them the Axeman to, fo Axe to follow up behind them. And then over here, we will spread out and do another feint on the second weakest tower. Uh, we'll start out with some swordsmen there. We'll get the spear infantry over there. And that will be my feint over on this side to hopefully draw some forces. I think if I leave my leaders back there, they probably will hold and draw off some forces. I might not split up quite this much if I was up against other strong generals, but since we're up against the garrison and we're going to get used to playing a little bit in these battles in the new game, make sure we aren't surprised by any differences. And we'll just keep our generals over here just to start and then we'll quickly probably bring them around to help with the main attack. So let's hit start and see where they decide to defend on this city. And looks like we have a little bit spread out. Didn't, didn't fake anybody out with my generals in the back. Let's start a forward attack right here on the halberds there. Let's bring our archers in over on this side and we can that defense right there and then we'll follow right up with our axe infantry and hopefully they'll be weakened down i'm tempted to bring in my i think what we'll do is we will get our generals moving over this way and if we see movement on the archers guess what this side will then collapse in on the archers to try to prevent them from reinforcing the two other entrances we're trying to break through Arrow's already going against the halberds here. And we're making forces here. The goal, obviously, is to take over these towers to eliminate getting shot at by these deadly towers. Okay, we already got the halberds here retreating. Maybe I should have spread out some arrows on this side to help this side retreat, because he looks pretty pretty solid right there. Like he's not gonna we're not scaring him, he's not gonna back off. Let's get in there, charge on in, guys. Their archers are staying put in the back while we advance. We'll take this gate real easy, it looks like. If 
We can move the cavalry just a little farther forward so they're closer when it comes time for them to advance. And the halberds decide to come back, but I think they're going to get change their mind once the arrows start falling again. And we got ourselves a bloodbath over here. And of course, we got this tower right here, which is not doing us any favors. Come on, let's weaken down these halberds. Max men are going to charge right in. That'll help. Bang, we have impact. Let's peek over the wall, see how it goes. They're wavering already. Hopefully the arrows aren't doing too much friendly fire on us. They're about to break. There they go. Let's charge forwards and start going down towards the arrows in the back. And time to bring all these other forces in and take over some towers and support in the rear. We're still stalemated over here, and we're taking heavier casualties than normal over here. Probably could have used one of those arrows over there to help weaken him up. Let's get the Axemen in on these arrows before we take too much more damage. And get my own arrows to see if we can go against those archers in the back. Cavalry's almost there. That will help wipe out the arrows. Then we'll see if we can't bring them around and do the rear attack on those halberds that are bottlenecking us over on the other side. Now we should be disrupting their archers any minute now. Let's just move our archers into the town center where we can. There are some barricades blocking the way. And they still got us nicely bottlenecked over here. But we're breaking through on all other fronts, and we will soon have them out of the way. Let's take this other gate back over. Okay, Cavalry, I was just going to say, they broke just as I was ready to do a rear charge over here so we can claim our victory. Maybe we split up just a little too much, but it ended up still being decisive, so we took it down without gaining too, too many casualties. So we'll take it. These attacks don't always have to be a work of art. They just have to work. And we will occupy here. Okay, what have we got? We've occupied the enemy capital, and they have moved their enemy capital to the rice patties. Our rice patties are usually little ugly, narrow little affairs, so let's see if I can do... Do I have the funds for any kind of recruiting coming up? Sure would like to get a couple more cavalry before we move on to Ling Ling the rice patty. Of course, maybe what I need to look at doing is getting some tougher melee units in place. Uh, 621. 
and we can just barely get the second depletes our funds but i feel a little better on a tight little narrow rice paddy to start bringing in some stronger heavier units to break through those narrow corridors so that's what we'll do with that um let's see who have we got negotiating wise is there anything that we need to look at doing we got another trade agreement we can take on I'm kind of thinking, uh, trying to make friends with Shan Yu up here in the north, kind of building that little buffer from Sima Mao, and then kind of keep me busy over here with what Mao ran. Maybe I'll decide to move south with Fan Zhu. We shall see. Um, and a couple of these over here look like they may even be abandoned provinces, so that kind of buffers me over here. So let's see if we can get a trade deal with Shan Yu. It's a little bit in our favor. Can we get a payment from him to help out? No, it's not going to happen. So I think what we will do, we'll just gain some favor. It's in his favor. I don't think there's anything else I really want to throw in that's going to sweeten the deal. Let's see, let's see what doing a non-aggression pack how that mixes up the flavor here um and we only have 15 left to make a payment with that's not going to put her in our favor so we won't have the non-aggression back we'll just go ahead and do the trade deal because we need the income right now by expanding the army before we take over these other territories we do need a little income I think that's it for this turn. Next turn, hopefully, we'll have a march over to the rice paddy and end this affair with Li Chang. So, let's see what the next turn brings us. Sima Liang, he's looking to form a coalition. Where is he? I, th I think I recall him being up north. And probably I'm not looking to make a coalition there to drag me into far away fights and whatnot so let's just reject that and save ourselves the trouble at the moment if we get something a little more local we can even look at setting something up ourselves but i'm still trying to get kind of the lay of the land with these new characters and the new interactions and not much happened this turn so let's take a look at character developments kang ji has entered the area i don't know if it's anything impressive 30 year old obstinate distinguished and nothing exciting overall that makes me say i just gotta have him but he'll be in the court a little while if i change my mind so let's see if we can reach the rice paddy of ling ling and finish off our expansion our very first victory over Li chang our first force that we should eliminate if we can successfully take over the rice paddy of course, if I demand surrender, I imagine nothing will happen. We have... Yeah, it's one of those tough little rice paddy maps. Narrow pathways, easily bottlenecked. And it looks like they're calling for a defeat on my part. So let's just try to even the odds a little bit and starve him out. See if we can bring him out into the open field and entice him to do that rather than have me go into these narrow corridors of the rice paddies. Makes sense to me, I hope. Let's see, I don't see anything else obvious pressing that we need to address. Um, Non-aggression pact, I don't know who. We might. See my chi. I'm fine making that a non-aggression pack if it's not too costly on our part. Whoa, he's very much open for it. In fact, let's see if I can get a little extra income from him just to balance that deal out. Whoop. Yeah, we'll go over 500, kind of put in our favor. Like sealing up the back door and keeping those guys happy back there since we're expanding far away. Okay, 
now let's see if we are able to force Li Chang into an open field battle. Let's move ahead. Moving into the autumn, so hopefully we can get something done before the winter arrives. Yep, he's coming on out. Still predicting a valiant defeat for me, so let's see if we can change those odds. I'm quite decimated, it looks like, from my prior battle. That's where he outnumbers me big time, so let's see if we can overcome these odds. Must crush these insects. I don't know. We're seeing a lot of confidence here being expressed. I don't know if I'm feeling that confidence. We'll find out here. Okay, he's going to get reinforced in the backside over there. I'm trying to figure the best spot for me to put myself. It's kind of wide open. Kind of wide open. Don't have much in the way of cavalry, but maybe we'll get lucky and we'll be able to snipe some of his archers off in the back. Hmm. Let's do it this way. Let's set up the line this way. They'll probably be coming kind of up that way, I'm guessing. And we'll keep these smaller forces of swords to kind of come out and help some flank attacks. That may be their best way to use them since they're farly, they definitely have not mustered up enough. And we'll keep another, another sword over here. Okay, I think what we will do, I think we'll keep ourselves open for dual possibilities. In fact, why don't we take our leader, Sima Ai, up this way and see what we can find. Doesn't want a dual character, cannot duel, so we probably are not looking at a dual situation here. So we'll just bring him back. And figure out the best use for them once their forces get closer. And let's speed this play up a little bit. I'm assuming since they were the ones to sally out, they will be advancing towards me. Yes, they are. And the archers are helping me out by being in the back side. they move into the forest I think what we will do is try to make our move to come up from the rear our men have been discovered and we'll slow down because he's sending someone off our way to try and break down our move
reinforcements farther back. So let's see if we can dispatch this forward force before the reinforcements arrive. That'll be the, the best wish we can hope for. Swordsmen are moving back because they lost sight of us, so hopefully that'll allow us to get a nice charge into the rear of those archers as they move forward out of the trees. Don't have a lot of horsemen. We're looking at 18 and 10. That is not much, but hopefully enough to disrupt the archers so we can have a bigger impact with our own. Let's speed up just to have them get just a little bit farther forward. And we are about ready to make our move with the horsemen in the rear. Oh yeah, now he brings his archers forward. So let's see what kind of disruption we can do. Get some arrow resistance going here. Find out who we can find solo, unprotected. I'll get away from those halberds, though. Halberd's about to break. And they do. Get away, guys. I lost track of you, and you're getting hit by those swordsmen. Can we thread the needle, get through their melee forces to those archers there? Cavalry is desperately weakened, but we're running around hopefully making an impact and disrupting their archers enough because as they get to our lines, our own archers are having an impact. Yeah, we're getting entwined with the halberds. I think I'm just going to take the cavalry out of it right now. They're just so weak to be ineffective here. Get my own leaders involved to try and weaken theirs.
Archers have depleted. My cavalry just decided it really wants to charge into those halberds over here. There we're starting to see. We're starting to see what we were waiting for. Let's chase them down just to make sure we don't have to do another siege battle inside the rice patties. Now we'll bring some cavalry down to chase them out. Speed this up and see what we can wear down here a little bit. Okay, I think we've chased off what we're going to chase off for the most part. Let's just end it right here. Let's see if we've weakened them enough to make it a lot easier for us to go move into those rice patties next turn. Or maybe we've defeated them enough to take over the rice patties right off the bat. Wouldn't that be nice? It was a close victory instead of the defeat it predicted, so at least we turned that part around. We are urgently needing some replenishment, so let's hit the recruit button. And we are still starving out the rice patty. Except they are greatly weakened. The Jin Empire has declared war. I'm not sure where that faction is, so we won't... And since Jin is so far away, I'm not going to concern about it too much. A rare talent! Though war brings chaos and disharmony to China, there is glory to be gained in battle all the same. As warriors clash on the battlefield, the victorious cover themselves in glory. One particular warrior excels, a unique talent that you would do well to keep close. So we'll go take a look at that character here when we have a chance. And faction succession. Oh, there's the rare talent. And we have someone returning from Changsha. Her mission is over, so we'll have to reassign there at next turn. Sima Yi, he has reached a promotion. So let's take a look at how we can best do that. I know I want to get over here, but there might be something that's even better. So let's take a look. Trust. Armor for all spear infantry, income from peasantry, morale when defending and enables unbreakable, morale when attacking plus battle speed, and uh, extra replenishment. That is our need right now. That is where we are going to apply it. And maybe I'm short-sighted, but I need replenishment as quick as I can early on, not being able to forward a whole lot of extra forces. So we'll focus on the replenishment there. And we have some new characters coming on through. I got a little bit of funds to play around with, but I, I will look at them in a little bit. I think what I want to do is let's zoom in and see what the odds are if I were to attack and no longer starve out. Okay, we've weakened them enough where now we can just take that decisive victory into the rice patty so let's just delegate that since it's a decisive victory we've we've played enough of the de decisive victories uh we, we fought the the tougher one already so let's just delegate this decisive victory and take over the rice patty we gained an ancillary Faction is no more, Chu Chong. Killed in battle, yep. 
Took over the rice paddy. Faction destroyed. And we have taken over the rice paddy. Friends. Who has made friends? Simi Yin and Huang Fu Shang. That's good. Never mind the development that way. We got a black thoroughbred and noble's leather. Hmm. Let's see if Sima Yin is qualifies for the noble's leather or not. Yes, he does. We have currently armor of the adept. And they're both essentially the same, so we're not going to do any change there. We do have here our new character. He may be needing some upgraded armor. Let's take a look there. We have the noble's leather, which increases his authority much so more than this. Yeah, it's, it's basically an upgrade, so we will equip Ling Hong. I'm assuming we're going to keep him. He just got recommended to us, but let's kind of see what we're looking at. Uh, cheerful, defiant, and sincere. Those are values I can deal with. And what else are we looking at as far as ancillaries? That should take care of it at the moment. Oh, the black thoroughbred, though. Do we have somebody? Let's take a look at the thoroughbred and see. 2K mass, 58 speed. We got better mass, but it's not going to help me there. doesn't help his instinct but it is a better horse overall so we'll just equip it there and hang on to it that way and we got a bunch of characters moving through okay we have taken over let's see what kind of recruitment we can do here we can fill out finally the rest of the cavalry ranks here and while our per turn income isn't right where I might like it to be, I'm feeling much more comfortable as a force here. So let's stop right there with the spending of the funds. What are we looking up in Changsha? We upgrade in four more turns, so we have time to get our ancillary back over there next turn. And I'm thinking, looking around, we are not any pals of Mao Ren by any means, I don't believe. Yes, we aren't. But let's see, let's see, let's see. Who is he friends with or who does he seem? See, he's friendly up north, so I don't want to upset my relationship I might have here. He's not liking these guys. So at some point, I think we'll move against Mao Ren, but I'm kind of thinking Fan Zhu, as long as he yeah, he's just kind of neutralish with everybody else and doesn't seem to have a lot of a lot of things going on here. I'm thinking I'm going to pivot south and take the territory from Fanju to expand, hopefully gain enough income at that point where I then can have that second army kind of setting up north to react uh, on the border there and then then free up Sima Ai to go back against Mao Ren. So let's see if we can make that plan work. Um, I think that's how I'm going to move forward. So we have anything left to do this turn? I don't think so. We definitely need some replenishment going, so I'm not going to be doing any fast moves to get down to do battle in the rice paddy. Oh, another rice paddy, another narrow corridor thing, but we'll move down there and see what we can do with our forces here next turn. And we are in the winter time, and we've gained that farm manager ancillary has opened up for us. Helps. Let's see, expertise resolve. Well, 
Why don't we bring the farm manager down this way? And then the authority ancillary down to Ling Hong. Just kind of work it that way right now. There, the ancillaries are gone. A hero's aid. You read a report about one of your generals who beat six enemies single-handedly, largely due to the courage, speed, and loyalty of their horse. Heroes have always had something or someone to help them achieve their rightful destiny. It can be a loyal follower, a trusted steed, a book of wisdom, or a weapon of unique properties, but they all fulfill the same role. Whether it is fate or by your very own will and actions, such a thing has come into your possession. So I assume that's the ancillary we just assigned. Um, oh, we have a, it says chance to gain an ancillary. So maybe next turn we'll, we'll find out and, and gain an ancillary. Mao Ren, what are you up to? You're gone to battle with Ruan Shen, who actually my lands are in the middle and in between, so I don't know how effective that war is going to be between those two forces. They can't even get to each other, so it's a war in name. And we have a chance to keep replenishing and moving. We're going to lose some of the double replenishment we would get on our cavalry. Ooh, but I want to get moving, want to get moving. It's winter right now. Man, if I stayed one turn, is that replenishment worth putting off moving on these rice patties one turn? Let's move up to the border. We're just going to have to take normal replenishment here. I want to keep this moving before something else develops. Get Grab what I can while I can. And let's see what the next turn brings us. We have been declared war by Sima Wai. Let's see if we can see where he is, because I really don't know off the top of my head. Oh, he's way up there with the Jin Empire, so go ahead, declare your war. We are a long ways away. Unless there's some kind of alliance or something going on. I oh, that we got another war against us. Song Wai has declared war against us. Where are you? Where are you? Okay, you're a little closer. There's something I'm not thrilled about is having Song Wai right on our northern border declaring war. Now that is more something to concern me. Do I have the time to move south? Do I feel safe on my northern border? I don't know. So some developments that are uh, not appealing right now to me. The Empress demands supplies. The Empress Garrison in is in dire need of nourishment. She says she comes to you to exact this nourishment, demanding a large quantity of food to feed her troops. What? do you say to this demand? Boy, I don't have a lot of food to spare, but thank goodness I took over the right patty, rice patties because at least puts it up. And what I got to do is I'm just going to keep focusing on a medium food donation and go for mind alignment because that is where I'm getting my points most. And we have a devious attendant. I think what we'll do is we'll see where we can use the devious attendant. We'll put him right down there with Hua Jinting for the moment. And do I dare now with my force to move down and see if we can take over the rice paddy or do I go up north to worry about Song Wei? Well, I'm getting greedy. We don't have great income to build another force. A little concerned about that. Changsha, on the other hand, will soon be a, a walled city. So at least it can hold out a little longer, maybe, for me to get back up there if they should advance. 
Um, let's see if we can declare war and take over this rice paddy. We have a decisive victory. We'll just go ahead and delegate that one for us. Okay, we will now find out soon if we've bitten off more than we could chew. I think in the meantime, I want to look and see at least if I raised an army up here. First of all, I think I want to send back... Who do I want to send back the most? We'll send Hua Jinting back to Changsha, and we'll do the same thing on the reform building because that's what's going to come up finally building that small city we're going to be able to do some kind of see if her boost on the on the on the reformation points helps out and kind of get a feel for how that command or that that works up here i'm still not super clear on that we did gain sima yin has gained a promotion so let's quickly take care of that we have the ability increase authority here counteract corruption which can come in handy down the road we also have the ability i'm going to go with the one that increases our authority and apply uh, counteracting corruption so it puts us over 100 there so that's good and we have a good force for down the road counteracting some corruption i think what we will do at this time i'm going to contemplate Increasing a force, or at least starting a, something of a force down here. What, what, or what options do we have for raising an army? We have the funds to raise an army. Not that we have the per turn options so much. We can still afford starting an army. So let me ponder in between episodes. We're going to call this one here at this time. And I'm going to see what I feel like I need to do to counter that threat from up north. Um, Song Wai, a little too close for comfort. I think and I need to start that second armory a little earlier than I might have wanted to. And then we'll see if we can quickly get Sima Ai down here and complete the battle that I started against Fan Zhu and complete this commandery and knock him out so we can then solidify up north against those that we're fighting against. Maybe I'll come up with some kind of negotiation if I think about it and we can get a friend from Ruan Shen to maybe help us on the north too. So we're going to contemplate all these things in between episodes and then we'll move forward when we get back. If you have any suggestions on how you think we need to proceed, I sure could use the input because we're here in the mighty unknown with a brand new DLC. So any input or ideas you all have that you think might work and help us out, please leave a comment. Let me know. This is Zigzag Zog signing off from Western Kentucky. Thank you for watching.